Hello everyone and welcome to another Feed Army video. My name is Emmanuel and in this video we will explain how to install structured data for your Shopify theme and also how to clean up and add open graph data and all of that can be done in this video. The code that will be available is for free that you can use. However, there is a newer version of the code that is paid version. And that is the newer version that includes, for example, the variants, so has variants, and also breadcrumbs and other features. So that is paid, but there is also a free version, which is the older version. So what we want to do first is actually see on your website if there is an existing structured data that's, for example, incomplete or broken. So what you do is either you go to your product landing page, so you copy the URL, or you can go and view the page source by right clicking. Uh, and then just on this view source, you do control A that highlights all the code and then you copy it. Then you go to search.google.com forward slash test forward slash test uh, rich results. Uh, I will share the link in the description. Then if you have the URL, you paste the URL here. But if you have the code, then you paste the code here. Then you go and click on test code. And then you can see that there is existing uh, structured data. So what we want to do is click on the group, then detected items and then click anywhere, for example, the type. And then we can see the type of structured data that you have added. Now, historically, that would be a meta tag, but that has not been in existence for quite a long time. So you don't need to worry about that. So what you basically need to do is then uh, copy just schema.org or just remember uh, what you're looking for. Um, so if you don't see anything, so let's go back to the test results. So if you don't have anything, that's great. You don't need to do this step where I remove the code from the theme. So you can then skip uh, forward. Uh, I will put it in the timeline. So the next step is to go um, download Visual Studio code. So that is code.visualstudio.com and just download this application. And this is the uh, tool that I use to search for where the code is hidden. Well, not hidden, but where it is placed. And then you can find it in the theme and remove it. That is the easiest and quickest way to do this. So what we want to do uh, is download our theme after we've installed our Visual Studio Code uh, tool. So we want to go to sales channels, online store and then we want to don't click on the free dot menu then download theme file and then it sent to the email once you've received the email then you open the zip file and you place it into a folder like i've done here so as you can see i've added all the files in there then what you want to do is open Visual Studio Code and you go file and then open the folder and then you search for the folder where you've uh, unzipped your files. So for me, I've added it here. So Shopify theme. What we want to do then on this folder, we want to right click and then click on find in folder. And then we want to type in schema.org. So you will notice that there are quite a few of different codes. So what we want to try and find is the one that is specific to uh, the products. So sometimes you can have, for example, that you have breadcrumbs. So if you're using the old, uh, the free version of the code, then you can leave the breadcrumbs that you already have uh, and just remove the product version. So for example, we've got featured product list. Okay, so we're going to go here. And we can see that it is, when we hover over it, we can see near the right hand side, so featured product of liquid, and it is in the sections uh, part. So what we want to do in your theme, so when we go and click on theme and then edit uh, code. So we want to go to sections and then search for featured product. Here we go. And then what you can do is just control F here and then just find schema.org. And then here we can see the code. So what we want to do is then the closing tag 
and the opening tag of script. So you can see that here. And we want to just remove it. Don't worry if you have made a, uh, a mistake, that's fine. So if we just click on save, then we can change back to the original one if you have made a mistake. So once you've removed it, then you go to your page again. So you either copy it again or you view the view source and then you reload this page. Control A to select all the code, copy again. And then we want to go back to the rich uh, section and then we want to retest and then check if the code is still available. As we've tested with um, the search code, there are multiple. So you can see here in the header.liquid, there's also, but this is uh, related to the organization. So you don't need to remove that if you're using the free version. Um, we want to, of course, as we can see here, it is also located in product template liquid so definitely remove this code of course here you can see it is my code it's a very old one but let's assume this is somebody else's code or my old code just uh, remove everything that is product related and to identify its product related what we want to look at is just add type and then product so you can see that here uh, let's have a look we have another code here and here as well so this is also schema.org and it says add product so we want to remove that as well um, we have here also article.liquid but this is at type article so you don't need to remove that so only the ones that have are uh, at type product and these you can remove now what we want to go and do is so uh, go to this file snippets and then GA4 events and here we have also some code I want to highlight that remove that save um, where else our product template so remove that there we go now in theory if we reload copy the code to another test now we should not see anything in here so let's have a look. Okay, so this is what you will get then. No items detected. That's perfect. That's what we want. Then uh, what you want to do next is go uh, uh, to the website URL I have linked in the description where you can see the free code version or if you want the paid version which has more features, um, especially for example if you have variants, that is a great option. Go there, um, buy, the plug, um, buy the code and um, copy the code. So what we want to do next is go to your theme in Shopify and go to snippets, then add snippet, and then type in feed army hyphen coding. There we go. So this allows you to uh, have your own file. Uh, it's good to just separate the code. Then copy the code. So I'm just gonna go into my section here so this is 4.01 this is the latest one that's the paid version but as I uh, explained uh, you can have the free version uh, the previous one free point version uh, that is available so we've copied the code and then we go back to our Shopify theme and then we paste the code you can then customize the code so if you're in the US then you want the US if you are for example in the United Kingdom you change this to GB or for example Ireland IE and so on let's just assume we're in the US so US we then can change the product ID it is important to note that the ID must match the ID in the Google Merchant Center product feed so you can go to Google Merchant Center then go to products and then view your product and then check what ID you have normally it will be something like Shopify underscore country code so US in this case underscore the parent ID underscore the variant ID so if that is the case then you just keep this to default however if your product ID in Google Merchant Center is the SKU then you just change this to SKU then we have our uh, returns policy so how many days uh, do you allow for returns to be uh, processed so most cases it's 30 days 28 or 15 or 14 um, so you just change that to whatever you want 
then if you have the shipping options um, so what you want to do is change the currency to whichever currency you have so for example USD and then if uh, shipping currency equals sh uh, USD you change that and what we want to do is if you for example offer free shipping over 75 uh, US dollars then you add 75 dollars and then it is free else it is for 50 for example that is what you charge if the shipping if the product price is below 450 uh, then you can also add the maximum and minimum handling time then the shipping time as well now you can ignore these and by default it is set to false to not show the returns and not show the shipping because in most cases the returns and shipping policy is already added in Google Merchant Center which means in this case you do not add that again in the structured data also adding shipping details in most cases is not possible through the structured data because it's quite complicated for example if you're using a courier based like FedEx or UPS then of course you can't add all this information in here that's way too uh, complex to add uh, this is actually only if you have a very simple basic shipping option um, so that's why I set it by, to basic uh, false uh, so that it doesn't show. Um, so newer versions of the code will of course show more features. Um, so you can see the code setting start and then code setting end. This is where you can then modify all the options. Uh, in later versions I will update the tutorial, the written tutorial. So make sure that you check the written tutorial to ensure that you have all the options uh, set up correctly. If the settings here do not self-explain what they are. So, but the tutorial will then explain it. So once you've done that, you just click on save. So what we want to do is go to the theme.liquid file. And between the opening and closing head, we want to include our feed army coding liquid file. What we want to do is add a new line of code that says include feed army coding. So feed army hyphen coding. And you want to do that between the opening and closing head tag. So here's the closing. So you can put it anywhere in between this coding. Of course, don't put it in between other uh, if else rules because that will mess up the feature. So either add it all the way at the top or add it all the way at the bottom. That would be my recommendation. So you could in theory just add it here if you want to. So then we want to do save. And then we go back to our source code or the page itself. We copy the URL or you copy the code. So let's just copy the code. Now we go to Sorry, we need to reload so that the new code is added. Here we go, we can see it. Then we want to copy the code, go to the rich testing tool, we paste it here, and then we run the coding. And now that we can see the products are added. So this is for a single product. And to show you for the new coding where we have a variance. So let's go here and we will view the page source. And we will do the test as well. So this is just one product, correct? Breadcrumbs as well. Uh, great. So we paste this here and then run another test. And now you can see we've got one product snippet and then merchant listings. We've got eight for all our variants. And you will get a non-critical issue. This means it's an optional feature. And if we scroll all the way to the bottom, you will see that it is related to the return policy and shipping details because I've set it to false. Again, this is optional. And the reason why I set it to default to false is because you don't need to add this if in Google Merchant Center it is already added. My recommendation is to add it in Google Merchant Center um, because then you have more settings to add the details more accurately, which through structured data it's not really possible, especially with the shipping details. So that is uh, how you add the structured data. Now we want to go and update the open graph. So what we want to do is go all the way to the bottom and then here we also see a file called socialmetatags.liquid and this is in the sections part. So when we open this, I will go to the older version so that you can see how it was before. And what we want to do is look for something called product. So we can see here product and the meta property for price amount and currency. 
when you go to the website linked in the description uh, you can see the open graph code so you just copy this part of the code and then we go to our editor in Shopify and we want to just go and highlight the if template.name it can be a little bit different sometimes it says something else um, but for all the versions that's this one and then the closing tag so and if we remove that code and then we place the new one the new one is uh, currency can detect the currency and also as availability which uh, is always wrong when you're using the default theme uh, liquid files so just save that and then if you want to check your website uh, for the code so what we can do is just reload and then control F for search and then we do OG colon price and then you can see it highlights here so now you can double check that the price is indeed correct and the availability is also correct as per the website that you can see on the um, visual uh, side of the product so just here so availability and the price now this is not required to show but if you already have it then make sure to update the open graph as well because that will be most likely incorrect uh, and it's also future proof if you add multiple countries then it will automatically change um, so that is basically how you update both the structured data and open graph. So there are two versions of the code, the free version that you can view on the website and also the paid version, which includes more features such as the variants, uh, breadcrumbs, etc. If you have any questions, feel free to ask below and I'm more than happy to answer. Thank you very much for watching this video. See you in the next one.